Welcome to this video where I want to compare the brand new MatePad 11 versus the MatePad Pro from 2019. And I think that might be a very interesting comparison because this is a flagship or was a flagship device and this is a mid-range tablet device from Huawei. Uh, both are running Harmony OS, so let's get started. As you can see here, both are with their full equipment. That means also the magnetic keyboard, both have them, and the pen as well, as you can see here. So what you can see on first glance is the placement of the pen is different. So this is to the right side, and this is exactly in the middle on the MatePad Pro. So the next big thing that we can see, obviously, is the color of the keys. So this one has in its magnetic keyboard the same color as the background of the keyboard and it has like a very slight kind of carbon fiber um, texture on this um, background here and the same that you can get basically here and the keys are in the same color you can see this is the qwerty layout and here I have also the same uh, carbon texture, slightly bit different, I would say. But you can see that the keys are dark, so they are black. And we have a quartz layout here, specifically the German one with the U -A -E keyboard layout, so it's a different one. I made a yeah, more in-depth comparison and tutorial on the MatePad 11's keyboard. You can take a look in there as well. The next big thing that we will notice is directly on the screen. We have a 10.8 inch screen here on the MatePad Pro LCD 60 Hz only and we have a 120 Hz uh, LCD uh, screen in 10.95 inch here, basically 11 inch. This is why it's called MatePad 11 here on the MatePad 11. Yes and uh, I can demonstrate you as well how it looks like with the difference. I took a slow motion recording in terms of 120 hertz against 60 hertz to see the big difference in terms of uh, usage. In terms of yeah, fluidity when swiping through different uh, home screens, you can clearly see that the 120 hertz yeah, gives you an improvement. But if you only are used to the 60 hertz on the MatePad Pro, it's not bad because apps are opening up as quick uh, as on the MatePad 11. In fact, this is one thing that we want to try out right now. So we will open up some of the applications and see which one is quicker. So we first start with 9GAG. So one, two, three. And as you can see here, MatePad 11 slightly bit quicker. Is it due to the Snapdragon um, 865 versus the Kirin 990? I'm not so sure. On paper they should be pretty much on the same level, but here you can see that on 9 gig at least it is a bit quicker. When it comes to native applications, just like for example the files application, they're pretty much the same. One, two, three, and you can see pretty much the same. Maybe the MatePad Pro a slightly bit quicker, but it's not much of a difference here. Then when we have other applications, just like for example, um, uh, what can I show you? Um, Netflix, for example, uh, one, two, three. You can see that the MatePad 11 is slightly bit quicker, but could be also due to network. So who's going to go in the profile first? One, two, three. And pretty much the same as you can see here. So not much of a difference. When it comes to starting the app gallery, for example, for updating one, two, three, we can see here jumped in directly into the app gallery. Here there was some advertisements, but in general they are pretty quick as well. There's not much of a speed difference that you notice in everyday usage by just starting applications. Only if you have them side by side, you can see that the MatePad 11 is a slightly bit more fluid in terms of animations, but this is because of the 120 hertz difference 
in comparison to the 60 Hertz. So enough about display and processing power, six gigabytes of RAM, eight gigabytes of RAM. What is about uh, the, yeah, how much stuff can they take in RAM? How much stuff do they keep in RAM? It's basically the same. Both are running the same version of Harmony OS right now. It's version 2.00. 0.138 so there's not much of a difference and all the applications usually just stay open without any issues so even with the six gigabytes of ram only in certain situations you can encounter that there is some app closing on the matepad 11 so if i'm doing some video cutting for example here and have my audio extractor and uh, music editor open up as well sometimes if i edit bigger music files in my music editor it shuts down kinemaster here on my matepad 11 where it keeps it open on my matepad pro so it's it's slightly inconvenience here and there in multitasking but in general you don't notice much of a difference in terms of six gigabytes versus eight gigabytes also in terms of um, yeah tabs in the browser i did not notice much only in heavy tasks like video editing is where i notice the difference between the six versus the eight gigabytes of ram Let's take a look at the rest of the design of the tablets and some specifications as well. First, I grab the MatePad Pro and what we see here are two speakers on the side. We see a power button and we see the volume rocker on the top. Then we see some microphone holes and the magnetic holes for the pen. And on the other side, we also have another two speakers. So we have four speakers in general. And they are powered by Harman Kardon, which yeah, offers you great, great sound quality. And we have a USB Type-C 3.1 um, speed. So you can attach an SSD via USB Type-C and copy over data, which I do regularly to yeah, save my videos that I do, just like this video here, for example. And this is basically everything. On the bottom, we have a slot for a nano memory card. This is the uh, one version where you only can add a nano memory card. There is another version of the tablet where you can also put a, a nano SIM card inside and you have like then 5G support. So this is one of the big uh, yeah, good things that you have like 5G support here. I think in Europe, when it comes to the MatePad 11, we only have the Wi-Fi version. I'm not sure if there's a 5G or 4G version, you can tell me. Basically the same setup. So we have on the left and the casing, the magnets of the case are a bit weaker here, I think. We have a power button with a red accent. So it's a difference to the one on uh, the MatePad Pro. We have two speakers here, uh, one microphone. Then on the top, we have the volume rocker. We have two microphones here and we have some uh, holds for the magnetic uh, holding of the pencil apparently and then we have here another two speakers also tweaked by Harman Kardon and if I have to compare them they get a bit louder than on the MatePad Pro and have a bit fuller bass so I like the MatePad 11 version a little bit more because it has a warmer more bass heavy tone but more clarity you get on the MatePad Pro definitely also USB 3.1 so you can attach and copy files very, very quickly without any issues. And again, on the bottom here, we have the opening and this time for micro SD card because this one is powered by a Qualcomm Snapdragon. So they decided or opted for the micro SD card. And now I want to demonstrate a little bit, at least the speaker. So we have like a non-copyright um, clap clip here that I will play back on the MatePad Pro first and then switch over to the MatePad 11 and you can decide for yourself which one has the better speakers, both, like I said, Harman Kardon tweaked speakers. Let's start with this one. Now the same with the MatePad 11. Mm -hmm. 
So both speakers distort a little bit on 100%. So I only put them like at the 90% mark. So one stop before the 100% or 95% mark. And what I can clearly hear, and hopefully you could also hear, these sound a li little bit fuller, these a little bit more tinny, but also have strong bass and also good quality. But this is the clear winner when it comes to the speaker test. Then we come to another problem or yeah, another feature, the selfie cam. You can see that the selfie cam has a different position. We have a top left position here, fairly large cutout in the screen itself for the selfie cam. But what I can guarantee you right now is like when I'm having this, I want to unlock this, recognizing my face behind the camera. It is pretty quickly in recognizing my face behind the camera. Let's do it maybe like so. And let's unlock it. You can see it's directly unlocked. When I do or try to do this with this one here, which has the camera here in the top edge. So it's not in the display. It's in top edge. The cutout is pretty small and the camera nah, is comparable in quality to this one, but a little bit weaker, I would say, especially in backlit situations. If I try to unlock now, yeah, it's working, but it is not always working, especially if I have my tablet lying like this. I want to unlock it now. It takes a while for recognizing my face. And here, if I do it on MatePad Pro, it's basically instantly. So this is one of the differences that I encountered is that the MatePad Pro has a better face recognition method than the MatePad 11. If you don't, face rec don't use face recognition, but a pin pattern or you don't have any because you're not using those on, on the go, then you don't have any issues uh, with this. So as some people will definitely ask, here's the Antutu benchmark results. Um, let me put it maybe like this. So 628,099 on the MatePad 11, the brand new one with the Snapdragon 865. And we have 500 and... Uh, uh, 74,614 on the MatePad Pro 10.8 Wi-Fi from 2019. So you can see that in terms of benchmarks, the MatePad Pro is losing a bit against the uh, MatePad 11. In terms of, yeah, do you feel it really when using those? Not really, I would say. Um, I have to say, sometimes I really think the MatePad Pro 10.8 is a little bit quicker than the MatePad 11 in certain tasks, but yeah, this might be down to my feeling. In general, they are basically on par and sometimes maybe a little bit quicker than MatePad 11 in certain other scenarios. Talking about uh, video editing, I do most of my edits in KineMaster because it runs stable on both of those. And this is the one I have to use for comparison. I would like to use Filmora Go HD, but for some reason Filmora Go HD is only working on the MatePad 11. And here I only get black thumbnails and uh, black rendering. I don't get any output on the MatePad Pro. So uh, this is why I'm using KineMaster. So let's do the same video clip that I have here and we export it uh, in full HD 30 frames per second. This is what I usually do at the same bitrate, 8.5 milli uh, megabytes per second. So around uh, 75 megabytes in file size, one, two, three. And now we see which is faster in rendering. And here you can see that the Snapdragon 865 has a clear advantage. It's uh, yeah, twice as fast, I would say, in rendering out the video clip as the MatePad Pro, which is quite phenomenal uh, depending on what video you are cutting. So this is why I'm using the MatePad 11 currently for cutting and for editing and exporting my videos because it is so phenomenally quick in comparison to the MatePad Pro, which was already quick in comparison to my high-end laptop that I have. So yeah, this is the time that both needs in uh, terms of uh, exporting video files. And I think the MatePad 11 has a clear advantage here. All in all, what can I say? The, basically what I can say is looking at the MatePad Pro, which is one of a hell of a device, very good device, has very good features. And the only big difference to the MatePad 11 is that it also supports wireless charging and wireless uh, reverse charging and has a Kirin processor. 
And here you have a Snapdragon processor, 865, which is a hell of a device as well. And if you take a look at the price, the MatePad, what the MatePad Pro costs back then, and you can get more performance, slightly more performance, especially in video editing capabilities, a bigger screen, 120 hertz, slightly worse battery life, but still for half the price, you get the MatePad 11. I think the MatePad 11 is a hell of a deal, especially when I'm taking a look at the new MatePad Pro 12 point something inch size. The MatePad 11 in comparison with the performance that can beat the MatePad Pro in certain scenarios, especially video editing, the MatePad 11 is a hell of a deal. So if you're considering between the MatePad Pro 10.8 inch versus the MatePad 11, consider the MatePad 11 because it has more power. You get more for your buck, basically. And uh, the MatePad Pro is an older device. You still get updates. It has the same Harmony S version here. You get wireless charging and wireless reverse charging. Uh, but you also get like, I think the keyboard is not so flimsy as here. It's a bit more flimsy on the MatePad 11. I have to say, but in general, I think you get the better deal with the MatePad 11. So if you're comparing those both, the MatePad Pro is not bad. It's just if you have to compare them, you have to announce a winner or both are acting basically the same. But here the clear winner, especially video editing, some speed and the, the fluidity of the display and also the pen, which I didn't mention, uh, which uh, with the M you can, of course, buy the M Pencil 2 and just put it here on the MatePad Pro, it will work the same way. In fact, I can do this actually and we'll see what will happen. I can see it recognizes the M pencil and here it would also recognize the M pencil. So you can just exchange them from each other. So this is not, not a big deal when it comes to this. But pen action also on 120 hertz, just more flu fluid if you like uh, to do some scribbles, like to do some painting or something like this, light painting. Um, the MatePad 11 is the clear winner, uh, definitely. The MatePad Pro is not bad. So if you have the MatePad Pro, you don't have to rush out, throw it away and buy the MatePad 11. Uh, it's, there's no reason to upgrade from the MatePad Pro to the MatePad 11. The reason why I am upgrading from the MatePad Pro to the MatePad 11 is slightly because this one has some broken internals. Uh, so I had to reset it two times already because I think the internal space has a little bit of an issue. If it runs too full, it doesn't restart anymore and I have to go into emergency mode and uh, reset it. So this is the reason, the sole reason why I got the MatePad 11 and also because the MatePad 11 has really, really a good deal um, for the price that you get. And as I'm doing a lot of video editing and need space as well, I'm using external space as well, but I also need the quick internal space for creating my videos. And here's only 64 gigabytes between uh, in comparison to this one, which has like, I think 260, 256 gigabytes is exactly. And here I only have in the base model, I only have 64 gigabytes, but it is so much easier and cheap uh, to get like a micro SD card that I can just plug in and use here on my MatePad 11 in comparison to the Huawei nano memory cards that are a little bit more expensive and you don't have the flexibility to choose which kind of provider of the nano memory card you really want. There's only Huawei basically in the European market. So this is why I think in total conclusion, the MatePad 11 is the better device. But if you have a MatePad Pro, uh, don't worry. It's still a good device. It can compete after two years still with a new device in certain scenarios. And yeah, this is, I think, also a good sign. That is basically everything for this little comparison between the MatePad 11 versus the MatePad Pro. If you have questions, ask them down in the comment section. And uh, if you like this video, you can, of course, like it, thumbs up it, and then uh, share and subscribe to my channel. That helps a lot as well. And uh, that's everything for this video. Hope you enjoyed it. Thanks for watching. Until the next time. Bye.